Thank you. Get, get ready to get slapped. All right. I haven't played Monopoly since I was nine years old. When I was a kid, this was my favorite game. But I haven't played since I was nine. I remember this day clearly. The day that I discovered hate. The day that I closed my heart. And it all began with a game of Monopoly. Today, I would like to share with you how I broke free from that hate. I would like to offer you my path to freedom. And it all began with a little game of Monopoly. Nine years old, playing Monopoly with the siblings. Older sis, 12. Two younger brothers, four and five years old. They don't really know how to play. My sister and I basically stealing their money and property, <laughs> allowing ourselves to feel rich and powerful. My parents in the next room trying to steal our fun. They succeeded. We could hear them arguing, yelling. And we're trying to keep my younger brother and sister sort of focused on the game. But they came into the room, stopped our game of Monopoly, sat us down on this couch. If you can picture us, four kids, you know, sitting there on the couch. And our parents had two decisions they've made for our family. Decision one, kids, we don't get along anymore. We're getting a divorce. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. All sarcasm aside, at nine years old, I don't know how, but this seemed to make sense to me. Part of it was, it was better than what was going on inside the home. The other part of it was decision two. Compared to decision two, anything you would have told me would have made sense. Decision two could not, would not even try to understand. Decision two breaks down like this. My two younger brothers moved from our home in Toronto to live halfway across the country to live with my aunt and uncle. My aunt and uncle later adopted my two brothers. So they grew up in Prince Edward Island. When my parents made this decision, I felt hate rise up within me. And when my parents made that decision, this hate continued to grow. And it was a hate that I carried with me until I was 18 years old. And as I felt this hate rise, I decided I wanted to do something to get back at them. My great plan, I was going to steal myself from their life. Because I looked at what they did as stealing. You steal my brothers from my life, I'm going to steal myself from your life. Now, how does one actually do this? I didn't do it by running away. I lived with my dad. He welcomed me into his home, took care of me, provided for me. My great plan was to conquer the world. I was going to do great things. I was going to be great and make sure they didn't know about it. And then when they found out about it, I was going to make sure that they knew they had nothing to do with it. I was going to make sure that they knew, I don't need you. I don't need family. And as I got into my teen years, my, my BJ crew became my family. My friends became my family. Screw you, mom and dad. This hate, even though only directed at two people, started to affect all areas of my life. I forward you to 18 years old, where my life begins to change. 18 years old, summertime, supposed to be the best summer of my life. I'm 18. Yeah. No. Forced to go to my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary. The tickets are bought. You're going. Listen. Don't get me wrong. I wanted to go to Prince Edward Island to visit my brothers, as I do every summer. But I didn't want to go for this family reunion thingy. Seven days long. Events every day. Celebrations. Oh, love. Family's the best. I did not want any part of it. The family rented a cottage compound. Up the hill stayed the aunts and uncles. At the bottom of the hill, the cousins. Thirteen aunts and uncles equals a lot of freaking cousins. And we're all sort of put together to share space. And we're told, 
listen, at the end of the day, we just want you guys to hang out. Older cousins take care of younger cousins, and you guys bond. And we're going to stay up the hill and do our thing. So my oldest cousin, Michelle, leads the way. She takes us down to the beach. She sets up this big bonfire, and she starts, pulls out her guitar, starts playing all these little kid songs for all my little cousins. It was horrendous. Sitting next to me, my five-year-old cousin, Amanda. I've never met this kid before. They just told me she was my cousin. And I guess they told her the same thing. Because after about three songs, this kid just decides to run up, jump on top of me, turns around, and then continues to sing and bounce like nothing happened. I know something happened. And I'm not very comfortable with this. I don't know what rule book she got this from. Oh, he's family. I'll jump on him. I'm thinking inside my head. All right, kid. You have exactly 30 seconds to get off me on your own. If you're not gone in 30 seconds, I will toss you into the fire. I had to get rid of this kid. Here's, here's what I came up with. Here's my, my brilliant plan to get rid of this kid. It's called the remove the knee trick. If you don't know it, let me teach it to you. Kid sits on your lap, you simply remove one of the knees. <laughs> Falls into the sand, rolls towards the fire. Hopefully. Now I see some of you already looking at me like, dude, you're mean. I am not mean, not to a five-year-old, because it worked. She fell off, rolls towards the fire, but then she gets up, brushes herself off, turns around me with this giant smile, look like this, and then starts to run at me full speed, screaming the words, do it. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Let's be clear, I will not do it again. Plan B, ignore her. Ignoring does not work. Five minutes go by. She finally turns and looks at me and takes over the situation. She grabs my arms, wraps them around her, and clearly says, um, you're supposed to hold me. Woo! What rule book is she getting this from? So now I'm holding this kid. And then the little creature has the nerve to fall asleep in my arms. So guess who has to be the one to carry her up and tuck her in her bed? I do. All the cousins, we shared cabins, so I just threw her in mine. I didn't literally throw her. I put her down nicely. But this is how it was for the full week. Every day, lots of events and celebrations, and at the end of the day, these bonfires with cousins. And every night, she would jump up on top of me, grab my arms, wrap them around her. Every night, the little creature falls asleep in my arms. Every night, I have to tuck her into bed. But here's the powerful thing. Here's the cool thing. By Wednesday, I found myself doing it on my own. Wrapping my hands around her. And as I tucked her into bed, I found myself kissing her on her forehead. Good night, sweetie. Ooh. By Sunday, I could not sleep. It's too many new emotions pumping through my heart. I could not sleep. So I decided, final day, 6 a.m., I was going to take a walk along the beach. Can you picture it? It's supposed to be like a beautiful journey of self-discovery, you know? I was going to walk, reflect, walking along the beach, footprints in the sand, lots of starfish, I'll throw them back. Hey, it mattered to that one. <laughs> but that's not what it looked like. What it looked like, what it was, was my, nine -year my five-year-old cousin Amanda following me, running down the beach, singing songs, building sandcastles at 6 a.m., annoyingly joyful. Me, I'm picking up rocks, throwing them back into the ocean, thinking about how I treated my family, my parents specifically. She sees what I'm doing. She places this rock in my hand, and I wound up to throw it, because that's what I was doing. But she yells instantly, Don't throw! I open up my hand, and in it, this rock, a beautiful throwing rock, to be honest with you, but she didn't want me to throw it. So I decided to play along with her. Oh, sweetie, this is, uh, what is it? She just looked at me like I was the biggest dummy in the world. Duh, it's a cousin rock. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's cute. That's cu um, I'm sorry, what's a cousin rock? You're my cousin? I gave you the rock? Cousin Rock. Uh, 
how we complicate things as we get older, right? And then this kid has the, she just hugs my leg. She squeezes tight and she yells up, I love you, Cousin Phil. I could literally, that heart that I closed for nine years, I could literally in that moment feel my heart peeling open. And it was an opening to forgiveness. And I picked her up in my arms. It took me about three seconds to respond. As I picked her up in my arms, I squeezed her really tight. And I said words to her that I did not want to say, that I did not think about saying to anyone for nine years. And I squeezed her really tight. And I said, I love you too, sweetie. And then all of a sudden you hear from my cousin, Cousin Phil, I can't breathe. (laughs) Sorry, squeezing a little too tight. Sorry about that, sweetie. All joking aside, a very real and very powerful moment. What it was... It was an opening to forgiveness. And in that moment, as I felt more open, life started coming at me. And I realized that if I want some positives, I must be willing to give some. I realized that if I want love, I must be willing to share some. So I walked up the hill, woke up my dad 6.30 in the morning, told him I loved him, thanked him for providing for me and putting up with me. I phoned my mom, an hour time difference, 5.30 in the morning. Mother instincts kick in. 5.30, okay, what's going on? Oh, no, mom, don't worry, it's nothing. I just actually, um, I know it's been about like nine years or so. I just wanted to call and tell you that I love you. Who is this? Literally couldn't believe it was me. But it was a very real and very powerful moment. So let's get real with it. Did that one I love you just heal the relationships I have with my parents? No. But here's the thing. The forgiveness that was inside that I love you allowed me to take a step forward and start something positive with both my parents. I learned many things from this experience. And before I leave, let me share just a couple of them. The overall lesson I learned is this. Forgiveness is a powerful path to freedom. Not the path, a path. Because what I realized is that when you hold on to any amount of hate, when you hold on to any amount of hate or the emotions that revolve around it, anger, frustration, grudges, all these things that get connected to it, when you hold on to any amount, big, small, any amount, When you hold on to it, it doesn't allow you to move forward. Stuck. Age nine, all of a sudden, age 18. I was nine years older, and I was in the exact same spot, feeling the same way, blaming the same people, and I was pretty good at blaming, complaining about the same things, wondering when my life's going to get better. Stuck. Nine years later, feeling the doesn't allow you to move forward. And the bigger lesson here is I learned that you don't have to be stuck to emotion because emotions don't get stuck. You get stuck to them. Emotions, they don't get stuck. They just keep moving. So instead of getting stuck to them, choose to move with them. Flow with them. So you can continue to move forward, press forward in your life in face of any obstacle. Today, today I have a very positive, loving relationship with both my parents. And I look at my life now, today, I have an amazing relationship with both my brothers and my older sister. I am married to the most inspirational woman. And together we have a daughter that reminds me of my liberation daily. But if I'm really going to be free, there's still one thing I got to do. Monopoly. I'm ready to play again. I'm going to be the boot piece and take a step forward. Thank you very much.